Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today. It is October 7th, 2022, Friday. It is the season finale of PWR Today. I'm the man they call me to joined by not only the Mots, the M-O-T-S, Matthew of the Streets, Matthew Thomas, the lovely Linda K as well is joining us on a Friday morning. So my only question is, are we Lee, are we ending on some kind of cliffhanger? Season finale, meathead. There's got to be some kind of cliffhanger. Uh, there's got to be some kind of question. Um, we need the viewers, the listeners want that. They want to be confused. They want to be scratching their heads. They want to be talking to their coworkers at the water cooler tomorrow about what in the world they just listened to. See, Absolutely. that's the. I was going to say that's the thing. I didn't want to tell you about it because you know we're keeping the script kind of. Quiet. It'll be one of those. It'll be like the movie Soap Dish, where nobody knows the finish. They just read it off the teleprompter. Who killed Jr. Right. Exactly. Who shot Jr. Was it all a dream? Or was it in a? Him. Yeah. Was it in a sudsy, you know, uh, shower? You know, where I wake up and it was all just a daydream, like a fever dream. Who knows? Wait a minute. Then, um, Does that lead into our first bit of news? I ho- hopefully nobody shot Jr. Right. Nobody oh, shot Jr. But I mean, Linda like K. Dallas, the show Dallas. The show Dallas. Anybody? Oh, oh, Dallas. Dallas. Not, not yes. Jim Ross. I got you. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. By God, Matthew. No, Linda K. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing okay. Just trying to rest up because I'm just on the go, on the go, on the go. But I'm excited to be here this Friday morning with the both of you. This is That's amazing. Right. With the boys. Hey, let's do business real quick here. First off, coming up this Monday morning, the brand new season premiere where you get the cliffhanger answer. Right, will happen this Monday morning. It will be the team of Linda K. Matthew Thomas and the man they call Meet It, and we will be doing PWR weekly. So instead of the daily, we're going to be doing it weekly. We will, it'll probably go an hour. It could go an hour and a half. I don't know how long it's going to go, but we're going to get to everything that's happened previously in the week. And it starts this Monday morning with Extreme Rules, with Battle of the Belts, with Bound for Glory, and so much more. So are you guys excited, Linda, for this coming Monday and the season premiere of PWR Weekly? Absolutely. I love the excitement. You got your season premieres of Raw as well on Monday. You got the season premiere of SmackDown as well. Now I think they the stole season. our idea, honestly. <laughs> Perhaps, but now you got the season premiere of PWR today, but weekly. So I think we still keep it as today because that's what we're known as PWR today. However, mm-hmm. now weekly. So maybe we just got to add like a dot, dot, dot weekly. Or something. I don't know. I feel like it's going to be that Hulu plus 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 commercial. Mm. So my only question is, do we do we kind of take the WWE moniker and be like PWR today, tomorrow, yesterday, next week, forever, forever? I will never get out of this show forever. All right, Uh, we got to start with a little bit of news, and it is not on a positive note. Um, You guys watched Tough Enough when it came back on the air on USA, right? Yeah, indeed. I think it was hosted by Josh Matthews at the time. I think Jericho was one of the um, the hosts as well. I know I that Renee Hogan Young was, as well. I think she yeah. Was remember host, Hogan yeah. was on there until the uh, the details came out about that recording with Bubba the Love Sponge, and then he got pulled off of there. Um, the winners. Do you remember the winners? It was one male, one female. One of them, I think, was Josh uh, Bredel. He wrestled as Bronson Matthews on the NXT band. The other one was Sarah Lee. I love Sarah Lee. Unfortunately, Sarah Lee yesterday has passed away at the age of 30. It's absolutely uh, horrible news. Um, I had not, you know, I remember her from Tough Enough. I had not followed her career after that, but just uh, just absolutely awful news to hear. Linda. Yeah, so young. Um, yeah, I, I also don't know if, like, the extent of her training at WWE or if she, you know, what other avenue uh, she went on to, but very, very unfortunate news. You know, what is the name of the young lady that's currently an NXT tag team champion? I'm talking to my NXT experts here. Uh, is it Casey Canton Zero, or what does she go by now? Katana Chance. Katana but Chance. Yes. Yeah. Anytime I saw Katana Chance, it made me think yeah. of uh, Sarah Lee. Because, I mean, they had had that same, you know, really athletic mm-hmm. uh, look. And, you know, she will be uh, survived by her husband and her children. And her mom had just uh, posted something on the Facebook and said that that is with heavy hearts that we wanted to say that our Sarah Weston has gone to be with Jesus. So uh, no word on the cause of death yet. And to be honest, I don't necessarily want to know. I just, I'm broken up over the fact that she's gone. 
Absolutely. Just uh, just awful, awful news. Okay, let's get into WWE proper and let's talk about commentary uh, teams. Linda, did you see the news that the teams have survived? It's time to shake things up again. I was just about to say the shake up. (laughs) New WWE commentary teams debut starting with Friday SmackDown. Uh, There is a huge change in the air. A couple call-ups as it uh, pertains to WWE commentary. You know, Wade Barrett, he's got some bad news for you, but the good news is Wade Barrett now on SmackDown. Yeah, that's so interesting to hear. I had no idea with the season premieres that we would get new hosts, um, returning uh, interviewers, or you know those that have still been a staple of the current product. Yeah, I, that was a huge announcement. Um, like for example, I'll just mention Jimmy Smith on Raw. I thought he did an excellent job. What a way to step in and really just take Because remember, he jumped in after, uh, what was his name? That only lasted about two months. Admir- Adnan. Yeah, Adnan. Adnan. Burke. Yeah, yeah. Adnan so. Adnan Burke. Yep, exactly. Oh, Jimmy Smith was so great. And I, I saw the tweet that Jimmy Smith said, just like saying like how great his time was there. So I don't, I don't yeah, know. Let me read that. Actually, thank you. For, uh, great segue, Linda. Let me read that. I just wanted to say, now that the story is officially out, that my time with the WWE is officially done. I had a lot of fun and met some great people, really and truly blown away by the acceptance from the WWE fans. You folks made it work every week, and your enthusiasm was amazing. Yeah. It was interesting, because on NXT this week, it was Wade Barrett with Byron Saxon and uh, Suda. I think he does... Yeah, I think he does some commentary for maybe Level Up or something else with WWE programming. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I, so I wasn't really sure what was happening there. But now it's announced, okay, we're going to get Wade Barrett and Michael Cole on SmackDown, right? We're going to yep. get on Raw. Kevin Patrick and Corey yep. Graves. And also, oh, NXT. and then Byron Saxton. Saxton is now going to be a backstage interviewer with the returning Kathy Kelly, who, yep. who was awesome at NXT um, a couple of years ago. And then... NXT is going to be Vic Joseph and can five you time. dig it, sucker? <laughs> five time, five time, five time, five time, five time. Wow. Thank you. You did that five times. Yes. Now, they they made an announcement, too, for pay-per-views. The proper announce team will actually be Michael Cole and Corey Graves. Matthew, your thoughts on the shakeup, the announcement that Byron Saxon is going back to backstage interviewing, and the release uh moving on of uh jimmy smith i think barrett and cole is something to keep your eye on i think this is going to be a very interesting duo and i think this has the potential to be an iconic wwe announced team i'm really excited about these two working together and the chemistry that we're going to see there i mean i think everything is going to be interesting i think they all sound like very, very good combinations, but that's my takeaway from all of this. I think this could very well be the start of another iconic duo in WWE commentary that we get to uh, hear tonight. You know, it's, we don't talk about this a ton, but how many iconic duos have there been? And every one of them have had Michael Cole on them. Yeah. Is it Michael Cole really being the consummate professional that he is, or are they just, you know, lucking out on these matchups? Because, you know, Michael Cole brought along Pat McAfee, and McAfee yeah. was, you know, out of this world. And let's talk about McAfee for a second. It was last month that McAfee announced he would be joining ESPN's College Game Day, and uh, he would be returning to the WWE family after the college football season. Triple H also said nothing happened with McAfee. We're allowing him to go do what he's got to do. You can't stop Pat from doing what he's going to do, but he's always welcome back in the family. Where does McAfee fit in when he gets back? Linda. Three-man booth. (laughs) Maybe. Three-man booth. Can you imagine that? Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, and Wade Barrett. Matthew? Absolutely. I think McAfee fits in wherever he wants to fit in. WWE knows what a hot commodity he they have with him. I mean, they they knew prior to the ESPN deal. I think they know now uh, even more. I mean, WWE always loves anytime they can go mainstream with uh, a mainstream, whether it be a podcast host or a commentator now, you know, with McAfee in, in game day. So I think McAfee, you know, can pretty much fit in wherever he wants to. But um, going back to iconic duos and talking about Cole being that consistent 
uh, variable there in the equation. A team I don't think gets enough credit that holds a very, very special place in my heart is Cole JBL. That Cole JBL run on SmackDown in the mid early mid 2000s is one of my personal favorite duos. And uh, you're exactly right. Uh, in this modern era, Michael Cole kind of as that mainstay. I, I really look forward to uh, really anybody they pair up with him because I think he is he has such a decisive lane, if you will. Um, and he's such a constant p- professional that he really brings along anybody else in the booth with him. I have a question, though. Every time you and, say it. <laughs> I have a question, though. And this question is about Kevin Patrick Egan. He says, his heart is racing, truly honored and so excited. Raw season premieres this Monday from Brooklyn. Let's get to work. WWE Graves, cheers. I, the jury is out for me personally on Kevin Patrick. Now, Kevin Patrick may end up being the best thing they've ever had. He's way too polite, way too happy. I don't think there's any grit there. Way too shiny. Maybe he turns heel the first night, oh, God. and he is a traditional. <laughs> he is a traditional heel commentator. Linda. I mean, if he's play by play, that that could be someone more in the middle. So do you remember Tanae trying to do heel play by play for a while. <laughs> do you remember Jr. trying to do heel play by play when he came back? You got your moose and you let their ass as he's talking about you know, Michael Cole. I, you know, not WWE related, but my goodness. Uh, Don West heel run in TNA was something special. Well, as a commentary, yeah, Tanae kept saying that he smelled like beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, the commentary teams have been shunken up, and it's going to be really starting off tonight. Let's start with uh, talking about SmackDown tonight. This is the go home for a big pay per view. Do you expect to see any big business handled tonight other than the commentary teams? I mean, we've got. Roman Reigns, Tribal Chief there, um, getting face-to-face with Jake Paul. Is it Jake Paul or Logan Paul? Thank you. That's okay. Sorry, Jake Paul had a huge match, has one coming up as well. So in my mind, you know, watching Fight TV. Yeah, so that would be (laughs) something, probably something to kick off the show, I think. I hope there's some physicality there. I want a little bit more excitement uh, for that match for everyone to see. Um, Otherwise, you know, we we had some damage done, no pun intended, on Raw's go home show to Extreme Rules. So I anticipate the same thing happening on SmackDown as well. Okay, Matthew. You know what? Um, I'm most intrigued by Cross McIntyre. I, I want to see some business get done there, and maybe some little subtle hints and some uh, layers of mystery kind of uh, revealed a little bit. Do we get anything? Coming up about, as my wife likes to say, the rabbit, the rabbit, the rabbit. Is it white rabbit time tonight? If you're going towards the reveal at Extreme Rules, which all indications point that you are, I I think you just need to have it go nuts tonight. I think you need to just, I'm talking seven or eight QR codes. You get the song on the air proper. To end the show, yeah. the lights go oh. out, the fireflies. I okay. Part of me would love that, and you just—that's how you end. But part of me only wants that when whoever this white rabbit person is emerges. So I, I'm okay. I'm okay both ways. Okay. Well, we've got a big show coming up tonight with SmackDown. Tomorrow, we've got more big shows, but first, we've got Rampage tonight. Rampage is live. Live, I tell you. Live. And right after the uh, Rampage goes off the air, they will be taping Battle of the Belts for tomorrow night on, uh, I think it's TBS proper, that we're going to have Battle of the Belts. I think I saw Jade Cargill and Willow Nightingale. I believe it's going to be Wardlow. And who is he taking on for the uh, TV belt? For the TNT uh, Who belt. is in that Wardlow? Wardlow match. You sure it's on TBS? Not, it's not, not on Turner Classic Movies? It's not on Turner Classic Movies. Wait, is it sure. Brian Cage or is that... Um, oh, that is. It's The Machine. Okay, yeah. As a matter of fact, it's Wardlow. No, wait. They just wrestled on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, we saw that on Wednesday. Yeah. There's so much wrestling this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that's why we have our season premiere this coming Monday. But before we get to the Battle of the Belts, we have to talk about Extreme Rules, and it's coming up tomorrow on the Peacock 
It is a point qualifying event. And here is the cliffhanger. Ladies and gentlemen, the draft is now opened and transactions are open as well. We won't tell you who it is, and you're going to have to find out the points Monday morning and see what happened on the pay-per-view weekend right here at PWR Weekly. Oh, my goodness. So uh, what you're saying right now is, is moves can be made, huh? Moves can and will be made. Let's run down the matches for Extreme Rules tomorrow. We've got the SmackDown Women's Championship Extreme Rules match. Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey. Liv Morgan trying to show she's extreme in their last two weeks. Is it going to be too much for Ronda Rousey? Uh, I, I don't think so. And I think uh, Team Nelson Matt Deli gets a title win here and a specialty match. Wow, Linda Kay. I think it's tough for Ronda Rousey to lose an extreme rules match. Now, I know it's weapons involved or it can be used, so that could possibly make her lose it. But I think she has to get, get come with this title. Hey, I want to I want to throw this champion. Go ahead. I'm going to throw this in here, uh, Linda. I know you were upset last time that the draft uh, opened up again, and that I kind of beat you to CM Punk. So I am getting ready to offer you a wonderful deal. CM Punk, Linda, can be yours uh, in this uh, right. this draft opening. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think gonna so. Going to pass on Phil. Going to pass on Phil? Yeah. yeah. How, about, you know, how about Kenny? You, you want Kenny? You want Kenny Omega? Uh, no, I, I think I'm good. You know what, guys? I think, if anything, this draft has taught me more so, like, if I have a move in mind, make it happen. Because I'm, that, yes, that Didn't whole, you um, lose Liv Morgan as yes! well to a, to a man they call Meathead? Yes, I was literally texting, and then you just beat me to it. I'm like, oh, my God. And that was when she won Money in the Bank. So, which means I would be in first place for the first time ever. <laughs> Not only won Money in the Bank, she won the title that night, too. Mm -hmm. The winner and still champion is the aforementioned Liv Morgan. Points for the man they call Meathead. Raw Women's Championship ladder match. Bianca Belair against Bayley. You know, I think there's a current theme here, and I think that's the theme of uh, Team Nelson Mandela winning titles and specialty matches. I see Bayley picking up the win and the title win for yours truly. Linda. Yeah, I mean, Bianca Belair was, has been my top picks, or one of my top picks, excuse me, on this year's draft and last year's draft. But I think the way things are going, that momentum for damage control, that uh, I feel that Bailey's going to come up with this win. And, you know, there's the chance of interference. I mean, it's a ladder match, we're going to say, because anything can really happen. But that chance of EO and Dakota stepping in to help Bailey, I see happening. So I do believe Bailey will come out the victor. We talked about this a little bit this week. I believe that this will be the main event of the pay-per-view. Bianca Belair retaining the women's championship match. And possibly at the end of this match, we get to feed your head with the white rabbit. Inside the fight pit with special guest referee UFC Hall of Famer, uh, Hall of Famer Daniel, uh, Daniel Cormier, Matt Riddle, and Seth freaking Rollins. Matthew. I'd prefer if uh, Dan Lambert or Dan Limpert, for that matter, were, was refing this match. But I'll take a. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's not the case. Uh, I think Riddle goes over here, and uh, you know, e either way, it's a win-win for yours truly. Linda, I think Riddle as well. Kind of like what I was saying with Ronda before. You're bringing in the fight pit. I mean, I remember that match him and uh, Timothy Thatcher had an NXT. You know, Toothless Timmy. Crazy. Gotta go. With Matt Riddle, especially with um, unless Daniel Cormier pulls uh, Mike Tyson, I, I believe that um, and, and cross chops. Uh, Sean yeah, Michelson. I just meant like yeah. you know going the other way. Yes. If we think he would no, be no, helping, no. or if, yeah, but no, I I think Riddle on this one. We're three for three on this one. Matt Riddle winning in the fight pit, a strap match, not a strap on match, but a strap match. Drew McIntyre carrying cross. Linda, kick it off. Oh. <sighs> I want Drew McIntyre to, to win this one, but again, I, I am going with just the the momentum of who's making their huge returns and making an impact, no pun intended as well. Um, oh, this is a tough one, but I, I, there's some chances for some shenanigans with Scarlett there, so I'm going to go with Karrion Cross. Matthew Thomas. You know what? I'm going to uh, have to agree with Linda here. And after my drop of CM Punk, I would like to welcome the newest member to Team Nelson, Matt Della, carrying Cross with the win. Okay. 
You guys heard it first, even though I thought we were going to save it for Monday morning, but oh. that's okay. It's happened. <laughs> that's all right. Karen Cross is on the uh, team they call second place <laughs> for Matthew Thomas. <laughs> hey, Matthew's taking Karen. my advice that I was just giving myself. Don't wait. Just go on for pick. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Karrion Cross is also going to be my pick to win this match as well over Drew McIntyre in the strap-on match. The I Quit match, Edge and Finn Balor. Linda, start us off. Who do you got, Edge or Finn Balor? I still feel it's going to be Edge, despite Judgment Day now being a foursome. I think that Edge will still come through with this win, but then get quite the beatdown after. Matthew Thomas? Yeah, I think I think no, I think Edge gets the gets the win here. And you know, I know we're potentially kind of late into the the Edge run here, but I I think he is still that's a story that you can tell for you know a title run since he's come back. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's still potentially in the cards there. I think you still keep Edge keep Edge strong. You can make a case for Balor, you know, with the win to kind of pass that torch, but. Balor's in a heel faction, and a heel can say I quit, and, I mean, it's kind of par for the course with the heel. I don't – it would be a big win for him if he made Edge quit, but I uh, don't think that's that's happening here. So here's where you're both wrong. Edge will be saying I quit to Finn Balor. Edge is Teflon. Finn Balor is going to get this win, and it's going to be one of those marquee wins for him. Think about this. Edge on Monday Night Raw said, you know what? It's getting to me. All this stuff has been getting to me. Beth. The kids, the kids are going to make him say, I quit. This is how the face quits. Finn he, Balor wins. Here's here's how I want to see that happen, though, Meathead. Oh, I want to see that happen with Rhea, with some physicality, with Beth, to have Beth in Absolutely, 100%. Yep. Okay. A new match has been added to the pay-per-view. It's a six-man tag team, good old-fashioned Donnie Brook match. The Brawl and Brutes versus Imperium. Now, a good old-fashioned Donnie Brook match is a variation of the Extreme Rules match with an Irish flair. The bout incorporates a variety of shillelaghs and other implements of destruction from the region and opens the floodgates on all-out anarchy. Matthew. People want to get behind the brawling brutes, okay? We had Gunther go over, Shameless. Gunther. You can you can have you can have the brawling brutes go over here by painting another member of Imperium and keeping uh and keeping the artist formerly known as Walter Strong. So I see Brawling Brutes get the win here in a feel-good victory. Linda Kay. Yeah, I got to agree with Matthew on this one. Just getting, they're just getting quite that rub, and the fans will love them. However, I'm just wondering uh, who will come into Extreme Rules as the Intercontinental Champion. Hmm, we'll have to find that out. Well, I'm telling you that it's going to be the good old-fashioned Donnie Brook winner. The Brawling Brutes. And you're right, Matthew. You know, you could have Seamus pin, you know, uh, Vito Vici, or he could pin, you know, uh, Ludwig Kaiser, or, you know, whoever it is. They're going to keep that pinfall away from Kai or, uh, from Gunther. Wow. Yeah. Not only do we have, again, tonight we've got SmackDown. We've got Rampage. Bound for Glory tonight. Tomorrow. We've got Battle of the Belts. We've got Extreme Rules. Monday morning, we will have all of this to break down for you. Linda Kay and Matthew Thomas, I know that we said in pre-show that we could go an hour and a half. It doesn't matter. Guess where we're at right now? We are just over a crisp and clean 24. Hey. How about that? Fan, Fantastic. I do want to add this out there. I mean, we saw it last month with the pay-per-view cycle. We're seeing it again with offerings from Impact, with what AEW is doing with Battle of the Belts. We, I think we are getting into an era of professional wrestling where it's not just WrestleMania anymore. We are seeing multiple times throughout the year where it is becoming more and more common for these mega wrestling weekends. And I think it's here to stay for a while. You know, they seem to be fighting for our eyes and for our dollars. But when Extreme Rules is free on the Peacock, Battle of Belts is free on AEW, you know, TV via TBS or TNT. And Bound for Glory, uh, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know where the hell to watch it. I mean, it might be on pay-per-view. It might be free on YouTube. I really don't know. But they uh, they want our attention, and they seem to be fighting for it. Linda? Yeah, I mean, so much going on. It's, I mean, just even throughout the week, let alone jam-packed into one weekend, um, I don't know if dates just aren't as flexible once you find out about other dates of other 
major Their counter programming is what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it tough for, to really get your product out there when you have something like, again, like pretty much free on Peacock to catch extreme rules. Like yeah. it's uh, one of the favorite pay-per-views there from WWE. And oh. you know what? We didn't even talk about, there was action at OVW. Some kid with a fanny pack's got a brand new song. Have you heard it? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Is it sung by action, action Bronson? No. No. But Linda, you've heard the song. Tell us a little bit about his new music. Yeah, I mean, the fanny pack kids just growing up. So um, it, it almost like has a Dropkick Murphys kind of feel to it. Ooh. I like it. You can see, uh, I you know, I just watched OVW last night, saw our, our good old pal Cal Hero there. And, you know, he did win the match and going up the ramp. Looks like he was playing a little guitar or something of that sort. So, Is that a rub from Ryan Howell, like a uh, rock star Ryan Howell? I mean, hey, they did tag together. Uh, week prior so did he uh, rub off on our kid but i will say i speaking of all this wrestling i will be back in louisville next week where uh the big announcement you guys so there was a uh cowboy invitational last night on ovw mm-hmm. I, i'm not sure if i got that term correct there but basically there was a tournament uh to find out who would face the ovw national heavyweight champion and also he is a two belts champion he is also the ovw heavyweight champion and i'm talking about cowboy james storm he Bo will be back Nicks at davis Red arena Nicks. this upcoming thursday yes uh yours truly will be back down there and uh let's see if there's a uh, you know like it seems like the last couple times james storm just in my face all time so i will see what happens but um cash flow is gonna be going on to face uh james from there so it's great to have our our, our, our dual uh two belts uh dose straps if you will, champion uh, back at OVW. Cowboy week. ghost straps, yeah. You know, I might have to come down there. He's talking to a member of our family here, and Cowboy James Storm's getting loud with uh, our Linda Cave. So, I don't know, Matthew. You and I might have to take a trip down to Louisville. Oh, absolutely. I think that would be a uh, a great premiere of this, uh, this tag team. Well, again, speaking of the season finale is now wrapping up. Coming up this Monday, the season premiere of PWR Weekly, we are going to have Linda Kay, Matthew Thomas, and myself, the man they call me, did, for all of our uh, friends here. And we didn't even mention our sponsor this week, uh, the lovely and beautiful Collar and Elbow brand, collarandelbowbrand.com. Get on down there, use Linda Kay, the promo code L-I-N-D-A-K-A-Y, save yourself 10%. Make sure that you're tuning in and join us this Monday for the season premiere of PWR Weekly. For Matthew, for Linda, I'm the man they call me, did. Thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.